What's up, y'all? Quick and dirty version of the tune Mo Gilamar, which I believe translates to My Gallant Hero. I do not speak Irish, so I'm not 100% sure on that, and I saw a couple of other optional translations. But it's a nice, simple tune. It's all basically in the bottom octave, which should make it fairly easy to pick up. Hopefully you can get the melody quickly. Let's break it down. It's the first section, I'll run that again. Next section starts on C natural. This tune is in G, so you're playing C naturals as opposed to C sharps. Your C natural may differ from mine. I'm going to probably play it like this. You can play it like that. You can play it like that. There's a lot of different ways to do it. That's the gist of this. Here's how I'm going to do it. It's kind of going down the scale in this case. We'll run that section again. Here's the third section now. Once more. And then to finish up, start back on the C natural. So it does go into that second octave a little bit. You've got the second octave D, second octave E, but not too bad. Once more. So run the whole A part, see if you can play along. Make it? Hope so. The B part is actually even a little bit easier. It does go up higher, but the overall melody is quite a bit simpler, I think, anyway. That's the first section. I'll run that again. Uh, keep in mind that that section repeats as the third section in the B part. Hopefully that's not too complicated. It'll make more sense when we get there. But here it is again. Second section is almost identical, except the last note is different. Otherwise, it's the same. So you're landing on the A as opposed to the G. Once more. Again, the third section is a repeat of the first. We'll just run that once. The fourth section is a repeat of the last section of the A part. Once more. So I'll play the whole B part all the way through. Again, see if you can play along. work on some ornaments. Being a slower tune, a march, there's 
uh, it gives you a lot of room to add things. It also gives you a lot of room to add too many things. So keep that in mind. Try not to overdo it. Here's how I would start. Couple of things. Right off the bat, the first note, I do a quick cut on that. Sort of a, um, an illin pipe kind of sound. Typically if you're playing pipes, you'd want to have a good strong low D. That, that grace note there gives that effect. You can do a single grace note on that E. Just to break that note up, give it a bit of a, a bit of movement, a bit of transition. So two things there. First of all, we've got a slide, which is really the first ornament, first ornament that I teach anyway. I don't know if it's the first one that you happen to learn, but it's nice and simple and it's just what it sounds like, sliding from the F sharp to the G. You're sliding from the F sharp up. That one is a bit of a more complicated one. That's really a, a Highland bagpipe ornament, going from A to B. If I were doing it slowly, that's how I would do it. All right, that's the quick version of it. That's, I would call that definitely an optional ornament. You certainly don't have to do that. A slide would work just as well. Or a cut and a slide. Mess around with that, see what works for you. See what, see what sounds good to your ear. Next section. I do that same little trilly kind of thing there, but again, optional. Could just do a slide. I tend to slide or, or crossing noise slide those notes coming down the scale. Just gives it a nice little, little groove, I think. So a bit of a crossing noise. Same thing on the E, where you're landing on the note below it and sliding off of it. And then that extra little bonus grace note like we did in the first section to finish the phrase off. Coming back up to the G, I almost always do that sort of cut slide. So you're, you're starting with a cut on the F sharp. And then another kind of that tap slide. Slide there. You could slide back up to the B or do that trill. Either way. Now, to finish, I've demonstrated that thing a few times. It's really, um, there's not really a great name for it. It's effectively just another cut. But the way you do it, as you're going from, in this case, a B to an A, you're popping that top finger off. I like to think of it as an earthquake. Your, your, your middle finger here hits the whistle, bounces this top finger off. That's kind of how it, it works in my head anyway. So when you do it quickly, it's a very short little, little you know, pop. And you can do a quick short roll on the, on the G to finish, if you want or just a tap. Either way, it needs to be fairly quick. Now the B part is fairly repetitive, so I do like to throw in a couple of crans on the high D. That's how you do a cran there, those three notes. Again, optional, not a requirement. A single grace note would serve, serve the same purpose, basically. All you're trying to do is, is find a way to separate those notes. You could always just tongue it, if you're so inclined, that works too. Now coming down, you could pop that, the same movement we just talked about. It sounds a little harsh to me, so I like to soften it a bit. Sort of a delayed cut, maybe, that's what I would call that. and then a tap to finish the phrase, repeating it again, except this time we're landing on the A in the second section. No different there except the very end where we're just sliding, or at least I like to slide from the G up to the A.
Third phrase is the same. I would probably play that almost exactly the same. Maybe mix it up if you're getting bored, but otherwise it's a nice simple little phrase. And then to finish, you do have an option of a tap on the C natural. Again, an optional ornament. Not that it's particularly difficult, it's just not very common, so you may not be used to it. You can tap that top finger, and that's one probably more than any other tap that has to be extra fast, because if you don't, well, very jarring, particularly on a slower tune like this. Falling down the scale, sort of the same way that we did in the A part, where you're doing that tap slide sort of thing. That's how I like to play it anyway. Let me know what y'all think. This is a great standard marchy tune. I don't really hear it at a session very often, but it's become incredibly popular in the step dance world for some reason as the vocal interlude between the dance numbers. It's a great song when it's sung well with the big orchestra and bagpipes and all that other stuff. So see if you can get it under your fingers. Let me know what you think. I'll see y'all in the next one. Cheers, guys.